Right, hello again. Um, welcome back to um, the Harbour at Staithes. Here's the reference shot. Um, and in this half of the demonstration, there we go, that's where we were last time, the end of the drawing. My intention now is to try and demonstrate my often um, quoted anthem, really, that line and wash is not just colouring in. Um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do here, what I intend to do, is to not replicate all of the colours that are in the um, the nab beyond there and on the sea and in the cars and in the houses, but I'm going to use selective colour to focus um, where I think the focus is and, and the perspective's working. That Look, the lines, they're all leading you in and the focus for me is that, that building there. So what I'm going to do now is start straight away um, and my uh, choices of colour may seem a bit arbitrary um, but they're not really trying to replicate the, the colours in the reference picture by any, by any means. Um, this is a mixture, This I'm just using an earthy mixture, so it's got a bit of um, quinacridone gold on it. I'm only being careful around this flagpole because I want to keep the white of that flagpole. Uh, if I was a proper artist, a proper painter, I'd use masking fluid or some masking tape, but um, no, there you go. Right, so you'll notice I'm not sorry there you go right so that's the yeah you'll notice I'm not being too literal and I'm not colouring in the whole of the the whole of the um, cliff side behind let's just get a bit of context in some greens that was sap green this is um, now, Green Appetite Genuine, and I'm going to bring this down here purely to see what happens when it, it um, there you go, when it blends with the, when it blends with the quinacridone gold. Um, oh, and I should have mentioned right at the start, many, many apologies. Um, somebody pointed out that there were quite a number of sniffs on the on the drawing stage I hadn't quite realized that uh, the cold was hanging on and that it was that obvious and so for that I apologize I think for completion what I'm going to do is take the green up to the, the head headland and that's this is not really to paint a nice, natural looking landscape behind. It's merely just to frame these buildings. And there is an argument, you know, um, that I could probably stop there, except I won't. Um, so what I need now, while that's kind of drying, because I do want to put some colour in these, in these rooftops. Uh, what colour is this? This... I'm just going to put a hint of sand. So this is yellow ochre diluted with quite a bit of water. So I'm going to put this down here. Very pale wash. Again, I'm only using this because what I want to do is to, the very last colour I'll put on here will be this lovely blue of the railings. Um, so I want to use this background. It's only f very, very pale and it's just helping to balance out. No colour here, at least I don't think so. Um, I'll mix, this is a bit of indigo blue mixed with some, um, some yellow ochre because I want to get 
again a base this is on the yeah it's odd how that has uh, resulted in a a grayer tint than I thought I thought it might have been green let's put a bit more there you go you notice I've switched to a smaller brush this is a a number six it's probably the smallest brush I own um, so there you go and I think what I need to do is to Sorry, I'm working away feverishly. Perhaps I should um, zoom the camera out so you can see when I'm when I'm breaking off and mixing the colours. Perhaps I'll work that one out for the next for the next video I do. Um, thing is, though, if I zoom right out and I'm working in a sketchbook, which I, I tend to favour, that's only going to be a small part of the of the overall. Uh, image that you see on screen I'm keeping an eye on this I'm dropping in this is almost neat pigment look to give a real frame to the buildings still not dark enough so let's darken that right down I'm just keeping an eye on the wetness no sorry the dryness of this wash um, and I'm because I want it to, to blend in, but I don't want to work it too much. I just, I really do love these happy accidents. I, I love when it, um, when watercolour just does its own thing. What I might do is try and be arty here. Um, put a few flakes on. At the top many various splattering techniques but I prefer this well I use this one most and then a handy piece of tissue just to pick up the ones that I don't want to to be too much Oop, sniff there sorry about that right um, so the next thing is probably I'd, I'd probably need to uh, really be patient and let that really dry before I go in there with any with any paint. So I think what I'll do is do that and then pick it up with the roofs, the other colour. Right, OK, that's dry. Um, so let's get some... Terracotta is a really difficult colour to mix and do accurately. So I'm using as a base, um, it's a Venetian red, which is a lovely brick red, but the terracotta of these roofs in staves has got a bit more yellowiness in it. So I'm using a bit of cadmium red and some lemon yellow. because I want these to pop, not using much. Uh, and the main one is obviously this, the roof of this. Again, one pass. I want to vary the colours, so I'm adding a bit more water to the mix now. For this, which is a kind of a more weathered, paler terracotta on this taller building. Um, and then we'll have... A deeper, a deeper red for this. The 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 rooftops of staves are a variety of colours. Um, and somebody told me during the last festival there that I'm sure this is true that um, if you want to put some renew your roof in staves. You're no longer allowed to to use the red terracotta. You've got to use some blue. You've got to use a blue slate colour, which seems ridiculous to me. Not sure if that's accurate. Perhaps anybody that lives in stairs or 
got a bit more accurate knowledge than me like to like to confirm that it might be apocryphal it might be completely wrong but i do remember somebody telling me that so it seems wrong that you can't continue the the tradition of the red terracotta rules that everybody knows um and i think yeah let's Now, eagle-eyed people amongst you may have spotted that I've made an error there. That's not a chimney stack, it's actually another dormer. So I might correct that somehow with pen. But there you go, I think that, that actually, it's starting to come alive. It looks fresh. Um, what I need to do now is to mix a nice, brilliant blue. I'll probably use cobalt. Um, there are spots of colour in the in the details on the building, which I'm just going to pick out. Although there's a door there that I need to outline. I hadn't drawn that in, and that's that's some kind of bluish thing. Something there. I need a really really pale pale blue wash. For the roof of this this last building over there because it's it's actually there you go and then this is all cobalt by the way i'm just gonna put some pops of color there i'll go back in there and i spotted something else that i missed out when i was doing the um doing the harbour wall and the steps. Um, I've kind of left the tops of the steps white and this slipway. So let's get that in. Just ground everything a bit there. Well, I've got a really tiny brush. I lied when I said a six was the smallest. What's this one? This is number four. From, um, this is from Sea White of Brighton. Fabulous little brushes. Um, let's get some bright red going on because there is just a tiny something here. And I'm making all this up, I think. But it just helps to. There you go. So, all that remains now for me to do, I think. I'm not going to fall into that trap of, um, of fully colouring in like, oh yeah, there's this, this car's red or that car's whatever. The cars are incidental. They're there just to give it some, to populate the scene. So all I'm doing now, and I'm not bothered at all, about the accuracy of where this paint goes. I just want to get the the feeling of the continuity of this lovely blue. Railing and I'll, I'll start over here, start from the left and go to the. Being a bit more accurate here because it just helps. A bit more credence to the scene. Gosh, that was a big word, credence. Why did I immediately think of Clearwater Revival when I said that? I'm giving away my age now. Mind you can probably work out my age if I tell you that um, I've just received an invitation to let somebody stick a needle in my arm tomorrow. Um, so that'll give you a clue as to where I am in the overall scheme of things. So I, I tell you, I'll be glad to get the vaccine. Even though I've had COVID, I still think it's another layer of protection 
and the more people that have this vaccine, the quicker we can get back to some semblance of normality. There you go, and I actually think that has probably achieved everything I need to do. Um, I might just, oh, here we go. I said I wasn't gonna do this. What I might do, see if I can find the, it's um, aquamarine, is it aquamarine violet? Yes, yeah, it's violet. Just for a shadow because um, I think the light source, now where is the light source? I can't really work it out from the photograph. But there is a bit of a shadow here, so I'll just put, that's a mix of indigo and violet. So I'll just put the shadow there. Um, put something there. There'll be another, another shadow there. Let's get something to go in bit more of this shadow colour, I think, um, along there. You'll notice I haven't put any colour on there. If I, if I did so and start it, then I'd have to put colour on the cars. I'd have to fill this foreground in. I want to keep your eye, the viewer's eye, going along the row which is why I'm putting the most detail and the most colour information going this way right into the, the heart of the the sketch the drawing sorry I don't call this a sketch because for me a sketch is something that's a preparatory or very quick no more than five minutes um, piece that's done either on the spot, so it's sketched out, or it's done in preparation for a more finished work, as in a, a sketch study. Always amuses me to see people posting online these fantastically detailed and obviously, let's see if I can do that. Obviously, these drawings, these pieces that have been worked on for quite some time and call them a sketch um it's just a pet hate of mine not a pet hate i just just not that convinced this building by the way like i think i think i said in the in the first half first part of the demonstration no windows on the on the seaward side it's probably something to do with weather protection and all this so you see I, I'm just hoping that I've managed to disguise that. And then the last thing I'm going to do, that chimney that shouldn't have been there, what I'm going to do is to put some emphasis lines just along the upper and outer edges. Especially this one and these. And it just helps to. Well, I hope it helps. I think it does. It just helps to bring it a bit more life and contrast. Now, we'll do it on this building, but I'm leaving this. This is almost like a full stop at the edge of where I want you to look. Um, put a few more imagined details on these vehicles there. I'll put that door in. A bit more there. And I think that'll do. No, it won't. Knew I'd missed something out. Perhaps the most. And it'll only be a, a really... 
cursory attempt. I need to put some sky in. Don't know why. There you go. Just put some. bit of cobalt blue with I think there must have been some green on this brush um, so there you go there's the finished piece stairs harbour done my way line and wash definitely not colouring in but if I carry on fiddling miss that down there look a bit of that beach just to give some And there you go. Now it's finished. Stairs Harbour, done in line and wash in my sketchbook. And I make no apologies for um, spreading it across two pages. I had a comment that kind of tickled me on one of the posts I did on Instagram, I think, that somebody said, it's a shame you couldn't have fitted it onto one page, but carry on anyway. I thought, oh, that's kind of you. Thanks. So there you go. Stairs. See you on the next film. Bye.